Hello and welcome to the British Dapper and today we're talking about a winter's must-have, the stylish duffel coat. So the duffel coat is a coat that goes back into my youth in the uh, 60s and into the 70s where a duffel coat was very commonplace and I was talking just the other night with a old school friend of mine and one of my closest friends, Glenn, about uh, about the duffel coat and he said he still wears one even to this day and uh, whilst I am promoting the duffel coat, unfortunately I don't have one myself but if I had the choice and the money and the wardrobe space, I would choose the duffel coat. And here's why. Now the history of the duffel coat goes uh, a long way back in time, back to its supposed origins in Belgium. So the duffel coat, as you can see, was first produced as a woven fabric, a very densely woven boiled wool affair. And it was in the 17th century in Belgium in a place called Duffel, which is spelt differently, uh, which was a province in Antwerp. And the coat was worn in the 17th century by the their Belgian Navy. The garment spread in popularity and throughout the Netherlands as well. Probably one of the initial influences of what became the Duffel coat might have been from the hooded Polish military frock coat which was developed in the 1820s and essentially featured what we commonly know now as the features of the duffel coat which was the toggle closure and the integrated hood and by the 1850s it spread throughout Europe as, due to its popularity. So where does the duffel coat actually enter the scene for the British man? and the development of the duffel coat in its modern sense or interpretation. Well, that comes down to the 1850s that we just mentioned, where uh, a gentleman outfitter's manufacturer, John Partridge, takes on and develops the first version of what we would now term the duffel coat. And by the 1890s, a less sophisticated version was being supplied to the British Navy from various manufacturers. Synonymous with World War II, this coat was used for cold weather in the North Atlantic and the Arctic regions by the Royal Navy in the Arctic convoys. It was also worn by British troops Amongst them, Field Marshal Sir Bernard Montgomery, who was regularly featured or photographed wearing his duffel coat. And believe me, even in the desert, it can be very, very cold. So not only him, but also Lieutenant Colonel Sir David Sterling, the creator and uh, innovator of the Special Air Service in the Second World War. After World War II, uh, the coats became uh, available in the UK through the form of government surplus. They were no longer needed after the war and there were vast stockpiles being stored in the UK which had been deployed around the world in World War II. And these were then released to uh, the public through government surplus. And one of the biggest companies to take on large amounts of stock was a company called Gloverall. And in 1954, they designed their own version of the duffel coat and released it for public consumption. And it's still very common to this day. And it is one of the go-to names for uh, duffel coats. An interesting point to note is that the World War II and the 1950s into the 60s, those government surplus versions of the duffel coat 
which one could argue is the more original, were unlined, but very, very thick boiled wool. And that is different to the ones that you can commonly see in the latter part of the 50s and into the 60s, and even to this day where you get a more tartaned uh, lining, wool lining, um, which is a quick way of differentiating between the two. So you get a three-staged approach in the youthfulness of the coat, for example. So the older ones were unlined. They then put a very plain lining to them, almost the same colour as the actual outer. And um, then the more modern version, which has got a tartan wool uh, lining. You also find that the older versions were wooden toggled and rope cordage being used as the closure. And this was because it was uh, readily available and easily used rather than a more upgraded version where we start to see the introduction of leather thongs or leather cordage and uh, horn being used for the closure. So the reason why we have the toggles on them is because it's easier to do up and undo and keep your gloves on. So very good in very cold weather. And the actual closure is overlapped to give you that extra windproofing on the actual coat. Something very rare, but can be found on some of the very older versions, is a strap that goes on the inside of the lower part of the coat that goes around the thigh to prevent that wind lifting up and getting you cold from underneath the coat. One of the key features is the colour of the duffel coat and for example originally the normal colour that you would predominantly see would have been for example the fawn coloured uh, material being used. Um, later it was uh, a dark black wool coat uh, and then later or the more modern ones we then see navy being used and as we get into the 60s onwards and even to this day there are a multitude of colours that are being used. For example there is forest green, there's greys, charcoal greys, there are chocolate browns, there are burgundies, there are lighter blues, yellows, there are, to name but a few, burnt orange is another colour that you see and bright red being used, albeit maybe not necessarily for men but the duffel coat has, has its own identity with not just men but also females. And something to consider is how we actually wear that duffel coat. So historically they were very baggy because they had to fit over uniforms and uh, they were very popular in the in the 50s and 60s. Bear in mind we didn't have central heating in those days. So the more layers would be worn throughout the day generally, especially in the winter months. And so uh, a sturdier, bulkier, more loose fitting garment would be ideal for the winter months. Of course, even today, that look is very good with a pair of jeans, uh, for um, example, with a, a casual jumper, and it's still a very good look. Obviously, if we're talking about wearing a suit or more formal clothing, then maybe that baggy relaxed look um, duffel coat might not necessarily be as good a purchase or something to wear with that formal look. So you might go for a slimmer, more tailored version of the duffel coat, which is still a very effective look and would go much better with that more uh, defined formal look. So it's uh, an item of clothing that you don't see very often or is not high profile. So when you see somebody wearing it, it really does stand out and it does draw your attention and you think that's quite a good look.
So I hope this has inspired you to consider the duffel coat. And uh, it's been around for a lot of years and I see no reason why it doesn't continue, uh, even if it's in that more casual look. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, then please feel free to do so. We have a Buy Me A Coffee page, so if you'd like to make a contribution to the channel, then please feel free to make a donation there. I'll put the link down below so you can get back to us. So until next time, take care.